couch Dogs need adolescents Hey there Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. In this video we're going to continue learning about improvisation, composition and soloing, uh, this time using thirds. The previous lesson uh, concentrated on sixth harmonies and this time we're going to concentrate on third harmonies. So uh, what I mean is something like this. Or um, okay, stuff like that. Um, you can take that in many different ways, but let's start with uh, the basic idea, then we're going to talk a little bit about theory, and then we're going to learn how to do this. Now, um, remember, the important thing here is that nobody can teach you how to solo, improvise, or compose. Uh, no matter what anyone tells you, you can't learn this unless you do it. Okay, you, you can't actually get answers from anyone else. Uh, not me, not any, uh, not even Steve Morse can tell you how to solo. You have to figure it out on your own. Soloing, improvisation, and composition is like speaking a language. Uh, if you listen to music, it's like understanding a language. But if you actually play it and try it yourself, then you learn how to speak it. It's two completely different parts of the brain. It's two completely different experiences. So, um... You have to do it yourself, okay? Um, I can only teach you so much, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna give you some concepts, I'm gonna give you some ideas, and then you're on your own, and you take it, and you try, and you don't give up, and you just continue to do it until it's fluent. So, um, let's start. Let's start with the D major scale, okay? You have two and three on springs one and two, okay? Then you have three and five, then you have 5 and 7, then you have 7 and 8, then you have 9 and 10, then you have 10 and 12, then you have 12 and 14, then you have uh, 14 and 15, which is the octave of our root chord. Okay, so again, 2 and 3, 3 and 5, 5 and 7, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 10 and 12, 12 and 14, and then 14 and 15. Okay, so that's our scale. Now, um, you can already start playing it with the D bass note just to hear how it goes. Right, just come up with a bit of a rhythm. Start with a question and then answer it. We're going to talk about this later on. Now, um, the idea here is that the thirds actually outline chords. So uh, this is, of course, D. This can be either E minor, it can be C, okay? it can be even this little nice chord, but let's not get carried away. Um, this is uh, D again, okay? This is either E minor or G. This is either uh, A or F sharp minor. This is uh, G again. Okay, and this, this is A. Okay, it's the octave of this. And this is D again. So that's the logic behind... Um, the thirds. That's why they sound so good together because they outline the scales chords. Now, as usual with harmonies, you can play them together. Okay, you can slide them. You can play them uh, apart from each other. Okay, and you can. Uh, use these two options in any way you like. You can play a couple of uh, bottom notes, then a couple of high notes. Okay, and that creates an instant solo. Okay, kind of an interesting way to, um, you know, dissect scale. And you can also uh, slide them down, of course. Okay, which is what I did at the beginning. 
okay? This is a really nice uh, trick that I uh, stole from Greg Howe. Um, it's um, a slide into a third, then it's high notes, then I play both of them again, and then I choose which of them to slide. Okay, or okay, sliding the bottom note or the high note. Now, um, you can alternate between them. Now, this takes a little bit of practice, but this is the best way I know uh, to solo over thirds. So that's why I allowed myself to jump right into that, because um, using this... Okay, you heard this a million times, but something like this... Okay, uh, I know I didn't play the scale uh, chords, I just wanted to show you... Um, a, a bit of a different harmony there so you can see how interesting this way is so this is worth practicing so once you're tired of doing stuff like this okay which might take years because you can actually exhaust it doesn't exhaust itself you can uh, if you have somebody playing with you or you're improvising over um, a song or something then of course you'll have tons of different ideas than if you're just playing by yourself. So you can harmonize for yourself with the D bass and just explore it. Okay? And find simple uh, ways to express yourself and different rhythms and different um, you know, different subtleties to, um, you know, instead of I played it okay, as a phlegm to uh, two different notes, but they follow each other very closely, but they're not simultaneous. Uh, so instead of you can do it like this. This creates a completely different harmony. Now this used the thumb and a finger. If you do it with two fingers, it sounds completely differently. Okay, this is uh, a different expression. So try everything, but I just wanted to give you this. Okay, as something else to practice when you're bored with, uh, you know, the usual ways to break down thirds. Now, um, having said that, you can actually, you know, find thirds in any scale, of course, that's a given, but um, what I wanted to say was that even if you make a mistake, uh, even if you play a minor third instead of a major third, that's, uh, by the way, this is major third, this is a minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, and then back to major. Uh, in case I haven't said that, I don't know if I did, um, then um, even if you uh, mistake a minor for a major third, that's not really a mistake, that's just a mode, okay? So uh, if you uh, accidentally play seven instead of uh, nine, no, eight instead of seven, let's say, or six instead of five, then it's not really a mistake. Okay, there's no such thing as a mistake in music or else jazz wasn't, wouldn't exist. Um, because um, everything you play outside of the scale gives that scale a different flavor and is actually a different mode of that scale. You can also combine scales. So um, don't be afraid of playing the wrong fret because there is no such thing. So uh, for example, if you play this, okay, now this is a bit of an exaggerated example, but it still sounds interesting if you continue the line. Okay? Into the right note. Then it's a chromatic approach. A simple and acceptable manner of soloing. So don't be afraid of chromatics. Don't be afraid of consecutive frets. Okay? Even with the same bottom note or the same top note. Okay, it just changed the bottom note and then slid down. Then again, you can do something like this. Okay, using uh, the same bottom note and changing the top note. So the options are basically endless. Or even... Or... Okay, both of which are 
wrong notes for the scale, but you see they work in context if you just let yourself continue the line and explore farther. Okay, now um, let's just uh, leave you with a minor scale also, the E minor scale, okay, because it's open, so it's really easy to create really beautiful things with this. So, um, okay, open first and second strings, open E minor chord, and you have two and three, three and five, five, seven, seven, eight, eight and ten, ten and twelve, okay, and then, um, now this is um, a diminished chord there, so if you want to play twelve, play it with twelve and twelve, okay, a fourth. Okay, and then that would prevent um, complicated harmonies. But if you uh, if you're daring, play 12 and 14 and see how that sounds, and then play 12 and 13 and see how that sounds. Okay, and then you have a couple of options. So you can do 12 and 12, 12 13, and 12 14. All of those give you uh, completely different expressions of the scale. Uh, so, um, just to leave you with an example um, of what you can do with this. Okay, something like this. You can uh, use the uh, thirds to harmonize your own solos. Now, of course, you don't have to do it like this. The classical way, you can just do this. Okay. Just trying to think of a simple way to do this, and um, of course, um, you can also play 11 and 12, okay? And this gives you the harmonic minor scale, uh, so I'll leave you with this. Okay? This will give you, uh, it will open up a whole new world of ideas. So before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've got a ton of lessons already on the channel for free, so why not join the Lick and Ref community, click subscribe and keep updated. I upload a new lesson every couple of days or so. And you go download the tab, the link is right below in the description, it's for free, everything is for free right here on Lick and Ref. But if you still wanna help out, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab, you can't miss it, it's large, it's blue, it's oval, it says donate. and uh, everything Thing goes right back into Lick and Riff, into making the lessons, into working on them, into filming them, editing them, uploading them. It all takes time and effort, so if you want to help out, I'd be more than grateful for any donation you choose to make for your own guitar education. So uh, you go practice this, have fun, and I'll see you the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Enjoy.